Air is thin at the top of the mountain. You can feel your heart pounding. Trees fly past you at 60 miles an hour. One miscalculation will send you on a collision course. Suddenly, the ground drops away and for a moment all is quiet. Then your bike hits the ground with the force of a jackhammer. Your leg shoots out, dragging across the rocky trail as you tilt your bike, desperately trying to maintain control. Thank God this is only a video game. Welcome to Durango, Colorado for the Norba National Championship, one of the premier downhill bike races in the world. The folks at INCOG were nice enough to invite us to tag along as they did research on their latest game, Downhill Domination. We even got to hang out with some of the pros. Well, I've been racing mountain bikes since, uh, gosh, it would be nine years, 10 years. I've been racing BMX for 20 plus. I race the downhill and the mountain cross, and the difference is, is downhill, you're all by yourself. You have a run that's anywhere from two to five minutes long, and it's just a timed run, and you're all by yourself. The main events that I usually focus on right now are the mountain cross, four cross, biker cross, whatever you want to call it. It's uh, basically a head-to-head -head type of a race, man-made course, big jumps, big berms. There are three major downhill bike events, and downhill domination covers them all. We have three types of racing uh, that you can do in this game, and each, each type of race promotes a different play mechanic. The three types are free ride, then there's the mountain cross, and the technical downhill. Now the free ride is the longest and most open type format. You basically are looking for the best line, you're tricking the whole way down to get trick points. The mountain cross is a new event in downhill racing, and you've got just big, huge double jumps, and that one's really, really close combat racing, so that one gets pretty good to mix it up with the other riders. The other one is the technical downhill. A lot of speed management, other mechanics that come into play is power sliding, object avoidance, there's lots of shortcuts, allowing you to get down the mountain as quickly as possible. There are over 30 of the top bike manufacturers showcased in the game. With nearly unlimited upgrades available, earning money will get you a sweeter ride. We've got a really uh, cool cash system that ties into a lot of different things that you can do, not only to your bike, but also to the rider. You can start upgrading your bike, your fork, your frame, your wheels. You're ultimately trying to get to that pro ride, which is super deluxe bike. You can also upgrade your combat abilities, which may not be one of the most realistic aspects of the game, but it's certainly one of the most fun. If you ask any of the pro riders, they would tell you that there's no such thing in, as combat when racing because you would get disqualified. Some of the combat maneuvers that we do in the game are punching and kicking. One of my favorite is hip checking somebody. They come riding up next to you and they want to push you into a tree and you just give them a little hip check and take them out. And I always get a nice chuckle from that. The nice thing is we've got all that great projectile technology. So, for example, being able to chuck a water bottle at some of your opponents, giving you that good sportsmanship edge. If weaving in and out of trees at ungodly speeds and battling multiple riders wasn't enough, you'll also have to look out for a few other hazards. There's going to also be a lot of dynamic hazards that come into play. We've got boulders that get triggered and you have to dodge those. There's actual spectators that get in the way of racing. If you hit them, you're both going to go down. We've got tons of wildlife, a moose, cow, bears, all these things that come surprise you. There's also some elements that come into play on the air like hang gliders. There's helicopters everywhere that you got to watch out for because the rescue helicopters may be sitting just right below a cliff edge that you're going to launch off of. Just when you think you've got it all under control, the weather changes and so does the race. We got one course where the storm comes rolling in and the lightning bolts start hitting the ground and you've got to dodge these lightning bolts or you're going to fry. 
And when the lightning bolts hit the trees, the trees catch on fire. So if you get too close to the trees, you're also going to take some damage and probably slow you down. If you can manage to keep from plummeting off the edge of the cliff, then it's time to master the tricks in the game. We actually try to derive most of our tricks from motocross, BMX, and mountain bike tricks. Designing the game with the help of some of the most famous riders in the world, Incog managed to create a great mixture of real and fantasy racing. We have 14 riders, five are real life characters, and nine of them are fantasy characters. We've got Brian Lopes, Harry Giannis, Eric Carter. I'm actually working with consulting and designing some of the course stuff in there. I think it's good. I think we're working really hard in capturing bicycle elements, which is going to be key to it. I think it's going to set it aside from the other games. This one is definitely a step up from what they used to have out there. I didn't want to stop. I mean, that's just like when you're doing a downhill run and you're having a really killer downhill run, you don't want to stop. And I was starting to get really into it. And by the end of it, my thumbs were starting to hurt. Now that the pros have mastered downhill domination, let's see if the game developers can master the mountain. No breaks! Ah! 